name is Beth Inceta Rubel and I'm a visual artist in Austin, Texas. I was named after my grandmother on my mom's side, and that's my African-American side, and Beth is a name that's passed on to the daughters generation after generation, and our family roots, as far as I can go back, are from Kosciuszko, Mississippi. And so my great 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 grandmother's name is Elizabeth and it's been passed on. And the name Concetta is my middle name and that's on my father's side and he's Italian and his mother was Italian and she also shared that name. So I was named after both of my grandmothers. I was born in Rochester, Minnesota and we were there for about a year and then my family moved around a lot within six years. We ended up um, moving to Pflugerville, which is outside of Austin, and that's where I was raised as a child. And so a lot of my experiences with uh, my racial identity have been shaped from uh, my family's experience of being interracial and me growing up in a really small, conservative, predominantly white town in Texas. As a child, I was painfully shy <laughs> and very introverted and I during recess I was that kid that like stayed inside and was like in my sketchbook and drawing every day and as a teenager it was pretty much the same thing I was very much a loner and art was my focus and I can honestly say that it's been a one-track mind on that for as long as I can remember and um, it's always been really important to me. It's never really been just something I did as a hobby. It's, it's been like a tool that I use to cope with, you know, anxiety or dealing with my feelings or how to, I feel like I can articulate myself better with images. So it's been in some ways, uh, I don't wanna say like a crutch, but <laughs> it's been like absolutely necessary for me. But I would say that what inspires me most, besides um, drawing from my own personal narrative and other people's experiences, is uh, I try to focus on race, sex, and gender in pop culture. And so at this moment in time, that's what's inspiring me most with my current series. I try to draw a lot from pop culture and the things that are being displayed in media, whether it's like hip hop video vixens or, you know, just reality trash TV. I feel like it's these things that shape American culture and like it has such an influence. This one particular time in high school, uh, a stranger had approached me and they didn't ask my name or anything like that. They were just like, oh, what are you? And I responded like I always did. I always said I'm half black and half white. And uh, they said, oh, you're a mulatto. And I didn't know what that word meant at all then. Um, and so I just remember going home and Googling the word, trying to find out what the definition was. And then I, you know, I look up the word mulatto and it means it's, this, it's derived from the Spanish word mula, which is mule, which is half horse, half donkey, which is impotent. And then like that word, you know, triggered this whole research of me learning history that they don't teach you in school and how like mulatto was a word that was used to define uh, half black, half white people and how that was part of a, a larger caste system. And um, so that was a turning point for me. In university, that's when I started the paper bag test series and several professors that did not know my background. And so whenever we would have an art critique and my work would be on the wall and uh, we'd be critiquing it in front of my peers, the technical ability was never critiqued. You know, the fact that I, I'm skilled was never critiqued. It went straight to, you're not black enough to be doing this. That sparked me to do the paper bag test series because I was just kind of like, how are all of these white professors going to tell me that I am not black enough to be doing work that reflects my identity? Okay, fine. So I decided to research historical tests that were used to ascertain race and define blackness. And I was like, okay, fine. You know, if I'm not black enough, then what is black enough? Let me do this 
series that is rooted in white supremacy, you know, to, you know, ask the, ask the same question that my professors were asking me, like, what is black enough, you know? So um, I continued it throughout college and after, and it really evolved to me going outside of my own experience. And I started asking uh, friends and peers to let me, allow me to interview them. And my only requirement was that they were of African or African-American descent. They didn't necessarily have to identify that way. And so it was really interesting. I had everyone that volunteered to interview for this series, you know, um, to pose and model and I photographed them. And then after the interview, I would uh, draw their bag and it's been something that's been a rich learning experience for me. Because people, you know, having someone open up to you about how they identify and their experiences with racism is, is really moving, like it's something that's deep. The Mike Brown piece was the first piece of that I did where I was portraying someone that was murdered uh, because of their skin color on the bag. And so while I was doing that, I was heavily watching the media um, as I was working on it. And so it was like really emotionally draining because they hadn't yet announced the verdict. I actually finished that piece like the week that it was announced or whatever. And so it was, um, it was really emotionally draining. It was, um, it was a really difficult piece. I ended up doing a piece with Eric Garner and Ayana after that. So in, in addition to the paper bag test series, I'm also working on a new series that's about Costa paintings. And that is that series is gonna focus on the historical Costa paintings, but I'm gonna put a modern spin on it and make it contemporary by using um, celebrities that are well known. Costa paintings were a type of painting that was used to document the new world and bring it back to Spain. And so they were, the painters were painting the vegetation and the cultures that were there. And in the New World, there were so many different cultures. There were Native Americans, um, Afri there were Africans there from the slave trade. And so there was lots of interracial uh, mingling happening. And so they were also depicting the offspring from those different cultures in these paintings. And so what ended up happening over time is they would class, they started to classify people based on how much European descent they had in them. And with Costa paintings, they had 16 categories and they literally ranked people from, you know, from number one, having the most European descent to the 16th category, which was you're just, there's so much mixture, racial mixture inside of you that we don't know what you are. So the more African descent that a person had, the more they were depicted to be savage, poor, uh, violent. Um, the biggest thing with costume paintings were that it always depicted three people, the mother, the father, and the offspring. And so the more African you had in the offspring, the more violent the image would be. So it would be very, typical to see an African woman and a European man and the child in the middle and for instance like the woman of color violently attacking the European male and there would be like the offspring, the child that was mixed in the middle like breaking it up. Series, I'm also starting another series which is also focused on race and pop culture. But this series is more interactive with the viewer. I'm, I'm 
using the same content and concepts, but I'm displaying it in a pop-up book fashion, um, mainly because I feel like interacting with art and things like pop-up books and nostalgic children's toys are an excellent way to teach people. With this new series, I'm creating scenes and shadow boxes with pull tabs where the scene moves. It's going to be more interactive. There's going to be sound involved. It's going to be lighting. It's a lot more uh, mixed media than I've ever done before. And so it's going to be lots of experimenting and it's, there's a lot of engineering aspect to it as well.